All right, so what we're doing, we're going to remove the 1 to 2 accumulator on this uh, 350C transmission. It'd be the same on a 350. Um, difference in a 350C and a 350 is the 350C has a lockup converter, and right there are the wires for it. That plug right there is for the lockup converter on here. So, what we're going to do is, um, if you've watched the previous video, you'll see that this uh, thing had a uh, was slipping in reverse. So, we're going to uh, see one of the sources of it. it's losing pressure in reverse. So it could be here, the 1 to 2 accumulator, it could be in the 2 to 3 accumulator, or it could be in the direct clutch piston. So um, we're hoping it's here. <laughs> so we'll need to push this in and then get this little retaining clip ring or whatever out. So push this cover in so we can gain access to this ring and pull, get the ring out and then we can pull the cover off. So, let me get busy. Okay, I figured I would show y'all this for So, I took the handle of a hammer and put it up against this thing and pushed it in. And it pushed in enough where I can now spin this clip around. So right here on the back side of the case, oh, I think it's pushed out a little bit. Yeah. See that little hole? And that hole is so you can get a pick in that hole. Like that, except with the clip up. Take it, move it back up, See? and now got that spring started out. I'll take this bit screwdriver. And I can work that out. I'm going to have to have two hands, but now I can get that uh, spring out. I may have to push on the cover a little more, but uh, I'll work it out and then we'll pull that cover out.
no, sorry. Yeah, we're still going. All right, so we'll just keep on. Um, so here it is, and it looks like this one has a, um, it's like a metal seal. gap in it. And it's a metal springy seal. And then this back one is rubber. And to me it doesn't look all that great. And I don't see any like spots but if you this doesn't look that great. So, I don't know if it's going to do a different. This one, this is rubber. I think what I'm going to do, just for the heck of it, is uh, swap them. easy to change out so I think I'm going to swap this one in. I'll clean it up a little better. It's very clean but I'll clean it up a little better. Put a little transmission fluid on the seals and put that one in see what it does. I don't see really anything obvious though here that leads me to think that this one was leaking. I'm kind of thinking our problems are elsewhere but you never know. So let me get this back in. We'll see what our pressure is. So back together, super quick. Let's see what it did. Let me go check the pressure. Oh, and by the way, this is my line for my pressure gauge. So I'm seeing something very interesting, and it kind of excites me. <laughs> Here we go. We are at mm, 60 psi. Just cranked it up. If I go to drive, I get about uh, 75. If I go to reverse, it jumps up to over 100. It's never had that kind of pressure in reverse idling. And I feel reverse kick in strong. So I'm wondering if that fixed it. I don't think I'll really know until it warms up. So let me let it off the jack. Um, I'll let it run and get warmed up. Uh, down yet. It's kind of idle down. Did I get good pressure in reverse? I don't know. We'll see more when it idles down and when it gets warmed up. I don't want to call it fixed yet. Alright, it's idling super low. Um, and we're getting about almost 50 pounds in reverse and we get about 75 well yeah about 75 in drive but reverse seems stronger it when you put it in reverse before it wouldn't uh, move on its own. And like I said, it's idling super low. The drive. I don't know. It feels, it definitely feels stronger. I don't know. It may not be 
fixed. I don't think it is. So we still got an issue. Hmm. I did see one thing on the accumulator, and I'll probably leave that one in there. I'm sure that metal ceiling ring is probably a better design than the rubber one that's in this other one, but I saw something on this bigger seal I didn't like. Right there. Where are y'all? See that? Go ahead, focus. Get the light just on it. You can kind of see it. Right there, glistening a little bit. It's a looks like a little piece of aluminum. Oh, you can see it real good right there. Come on, it's a little piece of aluminum in that seal. I guess it came from the case, but it's stuck to that seal, and I'm wondering if that could have, uh, you can feel it too. I'm wondering if that could have caused an issue, but looks like we still have an issue, so I think the next step is going to be to pull the pan. The only other thing to check, I think... Um, is the fluid level now because I've done two things that have lost fluid so I'm gonna let it I'll start it back up let it warm up make sure it's not low on fluid because that can cause issues too that can cause uh, reverse problems but um, that would be a weird coincidence I mean because the fluid level was fine before and it was slipping and that would be a weird coincidence to if that was the issue and now and I fixed that issue and now it's doing the exact same thing as it was doing except now it's doing it because it's low on fluid but we'll check it just to make sure and uh, I'm sure we'll end up having to remove the pan but for now um, like I said we'll check the fluid pressure or the fluid level